Today we're going to learn how to do those fancy 3D screen effects using Shotcut. Alright, so at first glance, it seems that there's no specific tools to do this effect, but with a little investigating and exploring, I found a workaround to this. So this is what to do. So as you can see, we're in Shotcut already and I already have my video clip situated in the timeline. Now before I start, I do want to say that you can add this effect to any type of footage that you may have. I always suggest adding this type of effect to any boring or still shots that you may have. For example, I'm adding this effect to a screen recording of me going through a website, which is typically the most common types of clips that you'll see this effect used on. Now a warning heads up, this effect does require a good set of filters in Shotcut and if you use shotcut long enough you know that it may lag either if you have a low-end or high-end computer but a few tips that you can use to help reduce that lag when you're trying to play back the footage is either by converting the footage itself so that it may be more friendlier in shotcut or using proxy files that should help reduce the playback when you're editing in shotcut but regardless of the lag once you export it should be a nice clean effect now that we got that out of the way the first thing you want to do is select the video clip go straight to the filters tab Hit the plus button and we're going to go to the video tab. From here you can either use the search to search up corner pin. Now this is a very important filter that will basically give you that perspective that you're looking for when you're adding this type of effect. So now that this filter is open, what the corner pin actually allows you to do is change up the perspective of your video clip as I'm doing here. You can either go to the preview screen and select on each corner and just move them around until you get the perspective that you want. And you can always go back to the value positions and just reset them from there. Now I do want to say that I actually tested this out before making this video and I have the precise values that I want to use for this video clip. I would always suggest using the sliders or the numerical values for a more precise effect when you're trying to get this perspective. Now you can copy these values for yourself and match it accordingly to your own video clip, but like always it's based on personal perspective. For me, all I did was mess around with the corner one value and the corner four value since I want to add some depth and perspective to this video clip as you see right here. Now that you got all these settings and values how you like them, you can always go up here and just select the preset and make a preset for yourself. So anytime that you wanna use the exact dimensions, you don't have to go in and manually do everything. And like I said before, you would need to do some adjusting depending on your video clip. But now that we got the first filter out of the way, we're gonna go back and add the second filter, which we're gonna look for the size, position, and rotate. So now that that filter is here, the next thing that we're going to do is zoom in the footage. As you can see, it's not filling up the whole frame, so I'm just going to use the slider to zoom it in. Once that is done, I'm just going to go straight to the preview screen and just move it manually so I can adjust it where I want to center it and stuff like that. This will take a little bit of adjusting since I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out, and I'm just framing it up according to my personal preference for the video that we're making. And you can do the same thing yourself. It's going to take a lot of adjustments, but it's all with the goal of achieving the end result that you want. Now if you don't want to move and frame your video manually, you can always go to the position settings and the size settings and just write the numerical value depending if you know where you want to set this. Of course I already did this so I'm just going to go back and adjust it to how I had it before and you can do the same thing. And like always, once you're done and you're happy with all your settings, you can go back to the presets and just set the preset for you to use next time. All right, so if you've been paying attention to the screen, you might have noticed the video clip that I'm using for this tutorial. And you might be wondering, what amazing website is that? Well, glad you brought it up because they are today's sponsor. Motion Array is basically a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. They contain a large array of premium quality templates, stock videos, and music for you to download to help you make better videos faster and easier. Sometimes when making a video, I don't have time to make new graphics, animations, or transitions, so I just use Motion Array and find what I need, download it in just a few clicks, and it's just that easy. Each template also comes with a tutorial, just in case you need some help. Motion Array is also membership based. That means that you can sign up for a month or a year and boom, you got everything and you're ready to download whatever you want and use it whenever you want to. So if you want to try it out, you can use my link in the description and try it out for free. You will instantly get access to all the free assets available. And if you decide to register for any type of subscription, you will be making yourself a favor and you would be supporting the channel. So thank you. Now let's go back and add a third 
filter, which we're gonna type in gradient. Now this is certainly aesthetic, so you don't have to do this, but I like to add a little bit of effects to the video itself. And I just wanna add some depth, you know? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna change the value so I can make one section darker than the other. And to do that, we're just gonna go to the color sliding tool right here. We're gonna press on the white one and I'm just gonna switch it to black by using this slider. And then I'm just gonna decrease the opacity just a bit. And then I'm gonna to go to the black value and I'm gonna switch it to white and decrease the opacity as well. So we're just flipping it around. Now it's time to redirect the gradient. So for the position values, these are the numbers that I used last time. So I'm just gonna switch it up so we can have the gradient going horizontal from dark to light. And if you guys wanna copy these settings, you're more than welcome to. And just remember that you have to do some adjustments when it comes to the opacity. But you can also adjust the gradient and how it shows on the frame just by going to the preview screen and just messing with these little handles. For the blend mode, we're gonna switch it to overlay so it's not too obvious. We just want it as a subtle effect. And we're just gonna go back to the color slider and adjust the opacity until we get the result that we're looking for. And we can go back to the blend mode and just make it as normal so we can see where exactly the gradient is going to lay over. And we can switch it back to overlay. And as you can see, we can see the difference if we turn on the gradient and turn it off as well. And like always, if you want to save this preset, now is the time to do it. Now the next filter that we're going to add, again, is just aesthetics and you don't have to do it. I just like to add some effects to this video clip. And we're going to be looking for a mask filter, specifically the mask simple shape. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a mask to a portion of the video because we're going to be adding a few more effects to create a blur further down the perspective of the video. Now these are specific settings for the mask that I found to work for me in this particular video clip. Now you're more than welcome to copy these settings, but you need to know that we're going to go back and forth adjusting these settings for a perfect fit. And as you can see, I'm adjusting some of these values like the horizontal vertical softness values. But now that I got it somewhere where I want to, we're going to go back and add the filter for this effect, which is going to be a blur. Once we add the blur, we can change the amount so we can see how it affects our video clip. It's affecting the blur to the whole video itself. Now what this mask is going to allow me to do is just place the blur in a specific part of the video like I mentioned before. I just want to add the illusion of depth by applying this filter on the far side of the video clip. Now, in order to do this, we must first activate the mask. So we're going to go back and type in a new filter called mask apply. As soon as that filter is added, you can see that the whole blur is only concentrated on a small portion of the video. It's pretty hard to see, but I'm going to do my best to show you. Now, this mask apply filter just turns on the mask that we just made earlier. So we're going to go back to the mask simple shape that we've added before. And now we're going to mess around with the values. I want to add this sort of rectangular shape to the far end of the video just to add this illusion of depth, like I mentioned before, and just blur that part out just subtly. So I'm adjusting the vertical, the width, the height and the softness of the mask. Now, this is going to take a while, but you can follow along and copy the settings. And I'm going to show you the final result once I'm done messing around with these things. And this is how it's looking so far. We have a pretty subtle blur and we can always increase or decrease the values of the blur as well as the mask itself. But these are the essential filters that you will need to make a 3D screen effect like this one. Now remember that at any point of the video you can pause and most importantly you can customize each of these settings yourself. As you can see I'm just going back and messing with a few things just to demonstrate that you can always make and refine those extra details and you can undo or redo certain things if you messed up or if you just want to revert it back to the original state. And once you're done adjusting, we can go back and hit play. But like I said before, these are a lot of filters and there's just gonna be a little lag in the preview screen or a lot of it depending on what your system is running. But once you render this video out, it should be a smooth and clean effect that you can add to your video. And that's how you can make your own 3D screen effect for your videos. Now, if there are more effects that you want to learn how to do in Shotcut, feel free to watch the whole series. But like always, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments. Quick shout out to Motion Array. Go check them out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.